Hey guys, on today's video I'm going to teach you how to set up your brand new MacBook Air. Now let me just show you around your MacBook Air first of all. Right here, that's for your headphones, that's on one side. Which is kind of weird because iPhones that you may notice, the new ones, don't have that headphone jack anymore. And right here we have this, this is for USB-C. What does this mean? Well, that means if you guys want to plug in a regular USB drive into here, it's not going to work, right? So what you're going to need are these adapters, which I'm going to show you right now. Now these adapters, these are the cheapest that you guys can get and they work really, really well. That way you can plug a USB drive here or anything, like an external hard drive or anything like that. So these are really, really useful. And if you guys would like to plug this into, let's say, an HD monitor, well, right here, this is another adapter, USB-C, and this goes to HDMI. So that way you guys can have a second screen for your MacBook Air. That's just another adapter I wanna show you right away. So these will go right here if you guys want to plug anything in, they'll go right there. And new iPhones, yes, that cable does actually plug in here, so you don't have to worry about that with newer iPhones. Older iPhones, you will have another cable, which uh, you will need this again, because you don't have USB-C. And yes, that's all we get with the Mac. It's only these two ports, plus here, we got this, which is just for your headphones. I personally think they should have just done a USB-C port instead of headphone jack, but anyways, Let's just get on with this. We're gonna open up our MacBook Air. Now, our MacBook Air is supposed to turn on as soon as we do that. If it doesn't for any reason, right here on the top right hand corner, you will see a button. So that's Touch ID plus a button. So once again, this up here is actually a button so you can hold on to it so it starts up if it didn't already. The main language. Now before we start with the setup, this is your touchpad. So with this, you can move around your mouse there's no touch screen, so don't be touching your screen. So what we're gonna do is just move our mouse over to English and we're gonna click. By clicking, just press down on your touchpad. So let's say I want another language, I can go down and on my touchpad, let me just move this over a little bit, I can scroll down with two fingers. So I can use two fingers to scroll down and use another language if I like, or if my language is on the top, just go back up and select that. To select the language, you do have to click on it, to so make Australian sure to click on it. The main language, press the return key. I'm just gonna select the first to one. Use English as the main language, press the return key. Which is perfect, that's exactly what I want. I can just go on, scroll down, you guys see that arrow? Just click on it, so I'm gonna click. And now that I showed you the touchpad, the basics, I'm just gonna zoom in on the screen a little bit more. So we don't wanna use voiceover, we're just gonna go ahead and select continue on, because Canada selected you can select USA or any other region for that matter. Uh, by the way, if your screen isn't maybe light enough, maybe it's too dark, or maybe too light, then you guys can also mess around right here with these keys. So I can go ahead and make it darker, make it lighter, just by pressing these two keys, which is F1 and F2. But anyways, let's keep going. We're just gonna go on to continue. We're gonna press right there. And here, it just gives us a little bit more about accessibility. We can actually do a lot with accessibility. We're just gonna go ahead and not now. So this is really great from Mac accessibility. So we can go ahead and select any one of these to just get help with it. But for now, we're just gonna go in not now. That's on the bottom right hand side. And basically we're just gonna keep tapping on the bottom right hand side where it says continue. Right now we do need Wi-Fi, so we're gonna have to select a Wi-Fi network. You do wanna highlight, there's other network options on the bottom left hand side. And in my case, I'm just gonna look for Tech and Design, which is me. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So let me scroll over it, click on it. I'm gonna type in the password for my personal Wi-Fi. Once I do that, I just press on continue and it's gonna take me to the next page. This is basically the most important part about setting up a Mac because everything's done through Wi-Fi. If uh, maybe your Wi-Fi isn't working that well, well, you're gonna have to buy adapters like what I just told you guys about these USB-Cs. You can buy an adapter that's from USB-C that goes to an ethernet cable, for example. So that's one of those. Anyways, let's keep going with this. Right now it's telling us about data and privacy. So we do have to press continue on that, unfortunately. <laughs> and from here we can migrate anything. So this is really important. If you guys had a Mac from before, I do have a video showing you guys how to use Time Machine in order to transfer everything from that Mac to this Mac, which is super, super easy. 
or we can transfer stuff from Windows PC, which doesn't work that well. I don't think it's that great actually. I think it's just better for you guys to drag and drop any files that you guys want into your Mac if you're brand new to Mac. However, if you guys had a Mac from before, for sure use Time Machine. I do have a separate video showing you guys how to transfer information from one Mac to another. It doesn't really matter if it's an iMac to another iMac, a MacBook to another MacBook. It's all the same thing using Time Machine. For now, we're gonna assume that you're brand new to Mac, so we're not gonna transfer anything. On the bottom left-hand side, we're gonna see Not Now. Just click on Not Now. And although we can set up this later, your Apple ID, because we don't really have to do it right now, we can go on the bottom left-hand side, it's gonna set, it, set up later. Again, we don't really have to, but it's very important to set it up because all your apps and stuff like that, your contacts, everything else that you want to be synced up will go with your Apple ID. So that's why it's very important to just put an Apple ID right now. If you don't have one, I do have a separate video showing you guys how to create an Apple ID. But that is our second option here. So we can always just tap on our second option where it says create an Apple ID and go ahead and do that. Anyways, once you guys put in your Apple ID, just put in your password and then we're gonna hit on continue. From there, you might have two factors. So you might ask you for that. At this point, just read over this and just click on the bottom left hand side. You guys will see this check mark. So just put a check mark right there, move with your mouse and put a check mark right in here. Then you're gonna click on I agree, which is on the bottom right hand side, agree. So the next screen is gonna take us is here. So we can put in our full name, account name, password, verify password, and then give a hint for our password if you guys want to. By the way, we can take out the password later on. So if you're comfortable, you don't want a password, you can just open it up and get working right away. We can take out the password later on. Right now we do have to set one up. However, I do wanna note that your full name and your account name is very important. So make sure you select the right one. So this password that we're putting in right now, it's not the same one as your Apple ID. You could use the same one, but I suggest just putting a little bit more simple. Unless you guys really want this to be more secure, sure, putting a really difficult password. Right now we're gonna click on the bottom right hand side for continue on again. And it's good to have this allow my Apple ID to reset password, because that way maybe you forgot your password for your Mac. You can always log into your Apple ID on another device. It could be even a PC. Just go into your account and then just reset your password so you guys can log in. Right now it's just creating that. We're gonna sign into our account in iCloud and then we're just gonna continue on. Now yes, if you guys had an iCloud account from before, maybe you guys had an iPhone or something like that, well, yes, your contacts and all that stuff could be brought here because everything syncs over. And that's what's great about iCloud and having Apple ID. Your contacts will be brought over to your Mac. At this point, we just have to wait. And then we're gonna see this screen, iCloud Keychain, which is pretty neat because it takes all your passwords and everything you enter that you want to save, you can save them in your iCloud Keychain. So that way, let's say I save a password for a specific website here. If I have an iPhone, I can go to my iPhone and then it's gonna know the password as well, as long as it has the same Apple ID. So wherever you guys use the same Apple ID, it's gonna transfer those passwords over. So it's really, really good. But if you don't want that, you don't wanna keep any passwords online, we can just set that up later. I'm gonna click that at the moment, and then we're gonna go continue on. It's really your choice. So find mine. This is something that iPhones, iPads also have. And yes, so let's say somebody steals this or steals your iPhone, iPad. Well, with this activated, that means we can lock this baby up and nobody can access your files or even use this Mac. We can blacklist it 100% if you guys use this. So I highly recommend activating it. So we're gonna go ahead on to continue. Yes, we're gonna go ahead with Express Setup. So we're gonna go ahead and press on continue. Now this part is up to you. However, I do like to share the crashes and everything that happens, any glitches within the Mac with Apple. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on. Screen time. This is something that is okay for most people if you wanna see exactly how much you used your Mac and what you used it for. Um, I see this more important if this is for your kids. So you can set up restrictions for them. That's really important. That's what screen time is really good even on iPhones and iPads as well. However, when it comes to adults, I don't really care about weekly reports on how much I used it for what. I know what I use my Mac for and I don't really care about this that much. So I'm gonna set that up later. Cause again, I don't care for that much. If this is for your kids, for sure set it up. And you guys can see exactly what they've been up to. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and share this with iCloud again. 
you guys don't have to but we can go ahead and just continue on siri siri is awesome um so you guys can talk to siri just the same well almost the exact same way as you guys talk to your iphone with siri or your ipad so it is good to enable siri so we're gonna go ahead and continue on and to set up all we have to do is just read whatever it tells you right up here Okay, so I turned off my iPad, which is behind me, so it doesn't get in the way. And that's exactly what we're gonna have to say up there. So we're gonna continue on. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? And that's it, my Siri is ready, so I can continue on, bottom right hand side. And I can share my audio recordings or not. For me, I don't really care, I'll share my audio recordings because it's just me asking Siri what's the weather most likely. <laughs> and continue on. You can choose not now, by the way. Alright, a lot of people ask me about encryption when it comes to Mac, and this is it. Right now we can turn it on or just leave it off. But once again, this is all up to you. I suggest doing it so, so I'm gonna continue on. Just makes it more secure. Now, as mentioned from before, we do have Touch ID that's on the top right hand corner. So go ahead, we're gonna set it up right now. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. However, if you guys don't want that Touch ID, just go on set up later. Maybe you want a lot of people to use this Mac and you don't want to set the Touch ID for every single person, which you can, by the way, you can add more Touch IDs, then go on to set up later. But uh, if you guys like the Touch ID, go ahead and set it up. So we're gonna go ahead and just hold our finger on top of here. I'm gonna lift it, hold it, lift. If you guys had an older iPhone, which had Touch ID, it's the basic thing. You just have to lift it and touch, lift and touch, lift and touch. So that's all we're doing until it reads our fingerprint. And there we go. Continue on again. And this is about Apple Pay. Some of you may want this, others not. In this case, we're gonna set up later because we don't wanna put in your credit card at the moment. So set up later. And right here we have a pretty cool feature by Apple, which you guys can have a light mode, dark mode, or auto. That means that during the day, it's gonna turn out this light mode where everything is white backgrounds, so let's say. And then our dark mode would be at nighttime where yes, at nighttime it's gonna turn dark. It's just better for your eyes. It's not as harsh, right? So we can turn on auto if you want to or always have it on dark. I like it to always have on dark. It's just my personal preference. However, to make videos such as this one, I kind of have to make it like this because it's better for the screen and to record. But other than that, I would suggest going for dark mode. At the moment, we're just gonna go on to continue on and true tone display, which is pretty neat. So it just tells you this, hold on, let me just press on it. So if I press on here, you guys see that slight difference in the color that just changed? That's what true tone display is all about. So I'm gonna continue. It's just something that Apple likes to brag about kind of, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good tech actually, because it does look at your ambient light and that's how it shows you the screen according to what settings of light you guys have at the moment. So right now we're actually done with the whole setup. That's it guys. You guys can get started using your Mac. Just gonna show you some basics so you guys can get started. On the top right hand corner, that's basically the most important part because you're gonna have your Apple logo up there. So let me just show your Apple logo up here. You click on it. And from here you're gonna shut down and everything like that. If your Mac gets stuck for any reason, yes, you guys can use that Touch ID as a button to shut it down. So you can hold on onto the button to turn it off. And you should customize a lot of stuff on your Mac because that's what's great about Macs. So go down here where you guys see system preferences and start customizing. Because Macs do have right clicking, for example. Um, your mouse doesn't have to be this slow, for example. We can actually tap. We don't have to always click on our touchpad. So. Here's our trackpad. We don't always have to click on it. We can actually just tap on it, just like you do on an iPhone or iPad, and it's gonna know that you're clicking. So we can set that up down here below. We can go on and tap to click. So click right there. And right now, I don't have to click. I can just tap, for example, tap. It's gonna close that up. So I can do that 
within my Mac and that's really awesome. Other than that, go on, take advantage of everything you got here, including Apple TV. So it does give us only seven days for free. Before they used to give a year for free, but I guess they have more content now. So that's why they're only giving seven days. It's just a channel. That's all the content they have, by the way. So just want to show you guys that just in case. There are a couple good shows, at least in my opinion, there's only a few. Anyways, for now we are done with the setup. That's all you guys had to do to get started. And if you guys want to find out more stuff about your Mac, I will be doing manual just to get you a little bit further into it. But I do have something uploaded already on my channel as far as MacBook Airs go. And that would be it for this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. And don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.